don't really deal with mental health, I deal with physical health. Um, the good news is I'm not exactly the exercise guy, so I'm not the kind of person who's been brought in to make you work off the pizza and the beer and that kind of stuff. I hear a few sighs of relief. Um, I do have a habit of speaking quickly when I do these things, so please feel free to heckle me and tell me to slow down or you know whatever as you need to. Um, is it? Sorry, here we go again. <laughs> um, wherever you are, Susie, is it just the next? I think it's the right one. It's plugged into the other. You got a spare yeah. USB. Oh, oh God, here we go. Thank you. That makes sense. If not, I can just use. I can get. I can do it on here, can I? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. Oh dear. Who is my assistant to help? I am. Which size is? Yes. All right. <laughs> Let's leave that alone. Let's do it them anyway. Okay. So I want to give you, um, if I can, I'm going to try and give you three distinct, simple takeaways from this talk this evening that you can go and think about and kind of utilize in whichever way you feel necessary. Um, I want to be able to give you the answer to the question, are we lazy? I want you to be able to answer that yourself. And if someone else is going to ask you, um, we're going to try and differentiate between movement and exercise. Now, they it does sound like it's kind of two sides of the same coin, but there's actually a world of difference. And I think it really influences a lot of the philosophies and ideas that I'm going to bring to you um, throughout this. Uh, and then I've had, I had a good think about this for quite a long time. There are hundreds of things I could get I could give you for this. Um, I've tried to come up with kind of the 80-20 the rule and give you the 20% that's going to get you the 80% of the results for a lot of the physical issues that people tend to get in sedentary workplaces. Um, just a word of warning, I'm also quite prone to making very outlandish claims such as exercise is indeed optional. I'm not one of the people who thinks it's the law. I know it really sounds like it is sometimes when you look at gym cultures and things like this, but this is great news for this guy. <laughs> Can we just have a quick show of hands? If anyone had a treadmill set up in their basement, who is likely to add the additional accessories like the monitor and the deck chair? Let's be really honest, because I think I'm, I, I would do that quite happily. I think, I think we can all agree. Um, Homer Simpson is kind of one of the characters who can typically get labelled as being very lazy. I don't think this is laziness. Um, I actually think this is really sensible, or even you could even say this is strategic brilliance because Homer is operating on something which from a bio biological perspective you would call the optimum foraging strategy, which essentially means you expend as little energy as you can to meet your nutritional and energy requirements throughout the day, and then when you're done, you put your feet up and you rest for the rest of it, and then that's that, that's all we need to do. Um, I always like to think of, has anyone seen a pack of lions hunting on TV, or maybe on safari? You know, they devour a zebra and uh, they eat the entire thing in one go and it's, it's gone and then they lounge around and there are flies everywhere and it all looks very serene. You're unlikely to get one of them consulting their Fitbit and say, guys, I think, I think <laughs> three and a half thousand calories and he's, <laughs> I, think, I think we need a quick jog, jog to Kenya and back. So, I th you know, I think it's unlikely. So this is my, that's my perspective anyway. Um, let's, in fact, let's just, let's just talk about this in accounting terms. You need to make more money than you put out, otherwise you're going to go bankrupt eventually. So I think this is what reinforces um, the, the need to be comfortable and sit down and put your feet up when you feel like you've done enough for the day. Quite like cartoon characters, as you can see for these. Um, so as Captain Caveman here is demonstrating, the, our evolutionary um, biology basically says that we have a very, very few primary motivators for physical activity. One of them is food. The other is drink, and then we have a couple other things which are various activities that humans like to participate in whenever they can. Um, I use, use this, and it often brings up the question, how is this really relevant? Um, I basically am trying to paint the picture that convenience and technology is not necessarily a bad thing, but this is just what has happened over the course of thousands of years. Convenience has basically eradicated the need for our physical activity on a day-to-day -day basis, typically. Um, it's very easy to think that this is a modern phenomenon. This actually started a long time ago with such as things like the invention of the wheel, and it's just been slowly kind of accelerating over the, the course of our human history. 
Um, a good example actually might be that getting a drink of water or just a bite to eat used to be a workout. Like it used to be a lot of strenuous activity versus today where it's, it's in the tap, you turn the tap or you can order food on your phone, which are all great things, but it does decrease the physical activity. Um, so very quickly. A few other things that I like to highlight to just show how some of the activity has diminished over time. Uh, so we talked about these two. Shelter and warmth, these kind of go hand in hand. This basically would be a continuous expenditure of energy over time. Whereas, as far as I'm concerned, most of us have this set. Everyone has a roof over their head. Um, if you don't have shelter for the evening, you can typically find something. Warmth is there, you turn on the heating and you put a blanket over yourself and pop your slippers on and make a nice cup of tea. And then that's done as well. And then predators is really more or less one another now. Rather than anything else, we're not really getting hunted by any other wild animals. So that's gone too. That's kind of been taken out of the equation. Um, the, way, the way I like to describe this is that Soci social and cultural um, evolution has kind of outpaced biological evolution. It's, it's really just left it in the dust, like a long way behind. So our bodies essentially don't really have any, any time to keep up with this change, which is why we end up with back and knee pain and various other things when we spend a lot of time in office spaces, sitting on chairs. Um, but it's not, it's not always just people in offices. I think there's, there's a tendency to think it is. If you look at the other end of the scale, the people who are in gyms all the time, they suffer from a lot of the same issues. So it's just a complete contrast from what we're biologically programmed to do that does seem to um, have this effect, excuse me, effect on our bodies. So, first take, first takeaway, don't mean food. We're not lazy. The human body is programmed for survival, not longevity. Basically, we just want to see the next day. We have no idea that we're going to live 70 years, um, yet in this circumstance we do, and this basically translates to eat more, move less, because we don't know what's around the corner. We have no idea what's coming. So the second, second section is the difference between movement and exercise. This is the world of movement. Does anyone want to take a guess where exercise goes? Hands? Where do you think? Bottom right. The bottom right. Yeah, As in outside or inside? Inside. Sometimes, yeah. This is where I put it. And I put it this small for a particular reason. I like to say that you can't exercise without moving, but you can definitely, ex you can definitely move sorry, without exercising. Um, it's really, really hard if we just take the hunter-gatherer perspective again. It's very hard to imagine them doing planned exercise. I think probably agree they had plenty of physical activity. Anything else they did was probably just playing and kind of fighting in the dirt, especially, especially for the kids. Um, anything else that sits in here? that's not necess necessarily exercise, is stuff that just happens on a daily basis. So we could say brushing your teeth, taking a shower, um, doing the laundry, gardening, doing the washing up, taking the dog for a walk, all of these things, all the daily activities usually can go in this. So let's just go back to that outlandish claim that exercise is optional. I'm just gonna add one extra bit, but movement is essential. I think that life doesn't really exist without it because movement can also contain things such as breathing, talking, pumping blood around the body, moving lymph, all of those biological activities that go on really without us thinking about it and actually actively having to do anything. And there's a nice quote that I like to use from Dr. Spina here, which is, exercise is a human invention designed to make up for the fact that we're not living the way we're supposed to. Now there's an important caveat here. I'm not a proponent of going, of chucking everything out the window and just take into the plains of Africa again, because I do quite like, and I actually really enjoy living in the age that we're living in, I think it's fantastic. But I do think that this perspective does help us understand the reasons for some of these problems that we're experiencing. Um, now, let me just give you a minute to read this one, because it's quite intense and in-depth. So, Contrary to popular belief, you don't need a gym membership, you don't need shiny clothes, you don't need the hit class, you don't need CrossFit, you don't need any of these other things that have appeared in the last 10, 20 years. To keep your body physically working well and functioning as it's intended to, this is exactly what you need. Basically, it translates in simple terms, every part of your body that moves, move it as much as it can 
and do it regularly. So it's nice and straightforward. Let's not complicate things. This is basically how you look after yourself. Um, I just wanted to ask if everyone, anyone here has suffered from any of these things. I think this is, let's have a show of hands if you've had one of them. More than one? How about all of them? Okay, okay, good. In fact, just as a, just a quick side note, I've got a, um, a questionnaire on Typeform going around, which is on LinkedIn and on Twitter. I'll link to it in a second. If you haven't done it, if you, if you wouldn't mind going on there and filling out for me, it only takes two, three minutes, it'd be really useful. Um, I've got a couple of results from it I can share now. Um, this one's actually really interesting, RSI. I think this is not a particularly difficult issue to solve because th the key is actually in the name. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the actual cause of the issue is, is right there. It's this bit, it's repetitive. Um, to try and illustrate this, I like to use something which is kind of called a, um, a benefit and drawback continuum. And at one end you have the, the drawbacks from the that will appear from doing nothing whatsoever, from just sitting still all day. And then at the other end, we have the drawbacks that will appear from doing too much of one thing. Somewhere, straight down the middle, is that place that you want to be active. So typically, RSI comes on the far right-hand side of this continuum. Um, and then very often, knee pain is one of the ones that's associated with the other end. And then there's somewhere in the middle for everyone where those things should disappear to some degree. Yeah, or if, you know, if, if not, hopefully, altogether. Um, and then one, actually one other really important point that I wanted to make on this is we have a, a tendency to really, really overcompensate for these issues. So what I am typically, typically seeing is, specifically in the exercise world, they take people who are at one end of this continuum who are very, very sedentary, and they throw them in at the deep end, which basically means you're going to run a marathon, you're going to do Tough Mudder, you're going to take part in CrossFit and all these other things, and they just they knacker them. They ruin their bodies completely, and there's there's a lack of moderation and the moderate ground. I'm not sure if we've taken this idea from our politicians or if we're helping reinforce this, but it seems to be something similar that's going on. All right, this is the, this is the, uh, the questionnaire in type form. This is me on LinkedIn and Twitter. And I just got a couple of stats from everyone who's filled this in already. I basically found that 90% of people say that their workplace doesn't require any kind of activity. Um, back, shoulders and neck pain seem to be prominent with, with everyone. 81% of people have sought help already, so they're clearly things that people want to deal with. And then more than 70% of people have given their problems a 7 out of 10 or higher score for need to deal with it. So it seems like it's quite a pressing issue and these things do have to be combated. So, I asked this question before talking any further because it's good to understand what we're trying to do, the results we're getting, and why some of the problems are persisting despite the facts a lot of people are kind of putting in their best efforts and good intentions to try and deal with these issues. Does anyone know who this man is? Yes, please. Yes. Where do you know him from? Great. Very famous TED talk called Do Schools Kill Creativity? And it's not overly relevant, but he does have, as you're coming to realize, I do like my quotes. One that I like from this talk, which is we've started educating children from the waist up, then we focus on their heads and slightly to one side. And I think we've been doing exactly the same thing with exercise, physical activity, and its relationship to the workplace. So here are some of the ways that we've been solving these issues. <laughs> For anyone who thought Pythagoras was useless, this is where it's becoming relevant, apparently. Um, the human hamster wheel has actually appeared. This is, <laughs> this is, this is readily available now, as, as, far, as far as I know. Um, so we've basically been trying to optimize sitting for quite some time. Yeah. <laughs> Say again? Sorry. All right. Dom Davies on the This is all. I was really hoping he's going to be here. Um, so yeah, do, do we have Dom here sitting on basically the really boring version of the space hopper. I actually think a space hopper would have been a really good inclusion because it would be great having people flying around the office on these things as that activity. Um, so these are three examples that as far as I'm concerned, their return is really, really small. I think they're nice ideas. And fortunately, this one is based on the idea that sitting on an a inflatable ball is going to burn four calories more per hour than if you're sitting on a chair. Four. Yeah, which basically means at the end of the day, you can eat half a banana <laughs> for, for your efforts. So personally, I don't think it's worth it when I come along to events where there's pizza available. I'd rather have something else. <laughs> 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 
Um, and then we have a really interesting one here, the idea of standing. Has anyone seen Tim Cook recently talking about the idea that sitting is the new smoking and that sitting causes cancer and kind of all this stuff? This is an interesting situation because I do agree with him, but I, do, I think that he's missed the point and he's actually missed the benefits which are underlying here. There's actually nothing wrong with sitting and being sat down on a chair. There's, yeah, our bodies are perfectly adaptable and can cope with this. The issue is how long we do it for, the, the periods of time, and what it prevents us from doing while we're sitting. Standing is essentially another form of stagnation. So we're still being very still, we're not moving, but it does allow far more movement. So I think there's actually issues with just sitting, which you don't really see them, if you look underneath the surface, you, you come to find the real problems that it's not actually sitting, but it's what it's preventing you from doing. And then the benefits are not just the fact that you're standing, but it's everything else it allows. It's a lot harder to stand still for eight hours than it is just to sit. It's very easy to slump and sit there and realize two hours later you really haven't moved apart from like, your, your, a couple of fingers. But when you're standing, you're very likely to turn around and you, you do all kinds of other things. So I think the benefits are actually, they're there, they're excellent, but they, they, kind of, they typically go unseen. It's not just the act of standing up and being in this situation instead. So I like to say that these ways of trying to solve the issue are basically like looking at it through a straw. And that's sometimes really useful, but we also have to take the big picture view and zoom in and look through the straw when we need to in certain instances. So I have a different proposal, and it is this. I know it sounds terribly boring. In fact, it sounds really dull when I read it back to myself. And I wrote this. <laughs> but I do find, instead, this is very empowering. It's rewarding. It's effective. It's time efficient. Um, it's friendly for your bank account as well. Um, and this is basically the situation that I've got to, where I like to hand over as many of the the good free tools that I can to people because I think empowering people to take responsibility and, and take charge of these things is the best way that we're going to solve these issues. Um, and I think this in conjunction with the utilization of, lot of, of a lot of the technology like you guys are doing at UEA, I think there's a combination of these two things which is going to be um, completely killer. It's going to be really, really good if we can figure out the right balance between the two things because I don't think one alone will actually solve the issue. I think it's going to be a combination. So. I'm going to give you one, one very short, quick thing for solving some of these issues, which is making hats. <laughs> no, really. What we're going to do, does anyone want to participate in this, actually? Should we have, we've all been sitting down for a while, should we make this really topical? Yeah? Okay. We are going to try and mimic what this young girl is doing here. This is sometimes referred to as the Asian squat, and this is not because it's um, only seen in Asia. This is typically because it's been lost in the West, um, and now you see it there as a result of that happening. It's not that it's unique to them, and they have some structure which are, you know, secret leg lengths and things that allow them to do it. <laughs> we have all been able to do this at a certain point in time, and I'm going to give you an example of what is, what is called motor amnesia, which is basically when your, your body gives you a, a function, and it's the use of joints, um, over time, if you don't use them because the body is working towards survival and efficiency, eventually it's going to say, we well, don't use it, so I'm going to stop giving you that option. So let's, let's not have that. You don't need that anymore because you never go there. Because as far as I'm concerned, you just need to eat, s drink, sleep, procreate, and make it through to tomorrow. That's what I'm here for, essentially. Um, I do think that we are slightly beyond that, but it does massively influence kind of where we're going. So who's ready to do and not listen? <laughs> All right. Shall we have everyone who's at the back of the room, do, would you mind moving the chairs backwards so we can make a little bit of space? And then maybe for you guys at the front, if you could spread chairs out, we'll get a little bit of room around everyone. <laughs> yeah, do, do, they, do they stack? In fact, if the chairs stack, then that's really useful. Perfect, great, good idea. <laughs> did someone say stretches first? Did I hear, did Ben say stretches first? Good question. <laughs> Alright, how are we doing? All oh, the chairs gone. Great. Okay, everyone come in and find a space. This is going to be fairly cramped. It's going to be nice and warm. So some, some of you guys move forward. You're going to have to come really, really close to me. Right. Can everyone see over this way? I'm going to... 
I'm going to do this, and I'm going to get someone else to demonstrate very quickly. We're going to have a go now. You're going to try and get to this position, which basically means your feet must remain flat on the floor, and you go as low down as you can. If you can't get there, I don't want you to force yourself. I'm going to give you a couple of other directions in a second. So, feet facing forwards. We're going to try and squat down on the ground. I want everyone to have a go and just see where you get to. Feet flat. If you can. can I that's the intention. Go for that if that's, if that's <laughs> not doable. Go for that. Let's see if we get on. All right, that's some quite good ones here. How are we doing? Yeah, sorry. Well, gymnast, sorry. Cheating. <laughs> Brilliant. Ah, uh, <laughs> Okay, so this is not a very good example of happens when you when you what happens when you work in an office because you guys are, are particularly good at this. This is not common. <laughs> I did I did this last month in C City College and I had I think it was twenty kids and there was roughly ten percent of them who could do this. The other ten percent couldn't. And they're stu they're studying sports and they were like you know really really screwed up, excuse the term, like relative to you guys. This is actually, this is pretty good going. Um, everyone is probably aware of the phrase use it or lose it. Oh, yeah, if you're done and you've had enough, then please, please do stand up. That's quite all right. Um, everyone is aware of the phrase use it or lose it. This is essentially what happens. Um, I'm going to give you... <laughs> We could, <laughs> we could definitely make this a competition. Feed him more pizza and make him sit still for <laughs> Okay, very quickly, I want to give you... This is the only thing I'm going to give you, because I like to make this very simple, and it's not going to be complicated. This is the idea. If you can do this, and you can get your feet flat on the floor, I want you to try and spend 20 minutes a day squatting down the ground. It doesn't mean in one go, don't worry. This basically means in as many situations as you can. So if you've got to make a phone call, write a text message, if you wait for the bus, You'll get some weird looks. I'm, 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 te I'm testing this out and people are getting used to it because they see me around town now doing this kind of stuff. So it's, you don't look like the weirdo that I did a couple of years ago. Um, basically, just implement it whenever you can. The action of putting the hips, the knees and the ankles through the entire range of motion, and this is also weighted because you're holding your body weight. Over the course of time, you also have to remember that you're actually getting up and down. So this is exercise too at the same time. Make it a function of your day. Make it just a way of doing other bits and pieces, reading, that kind of stuff. And just implement it as often as you can. Um, I'm going to have details at the end, and I want to hear from anyone who does manage to implement this. I usually typically say, just go for a full month if you can. Try and do it every single day. You'll get a few aches and pains. By the end of 30 days, it will be gone. You should, f you should feel a lot of other issues that you get, especially in the lower back, will start to subside. This is very, very common. Um, so this is your directive for this stuff. Um, we're going to have a really quick competition, as everyone's standing up. Someone, you mentioned competition, didn't you, earlier? <laughs> <laughs> who, right, who hasn't heard of this game? Anyone? It's Rock, paper, scissors? Up, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are going to have, the, the prize here is basically to come and work with me and focus on a couple of physical issues um, for whoever wins this. So it's really, this is not down to skill, this is just going to be luck, but we're all going to participate. The, the goal is you're going to get some time with me to figure out some of the issues you have, back pain, knee pain, ankle, you know, whatever it is, I want to help solve it. What we're going to do is pair up, so you're going to find the person closest to you in the room. We're going to have a game of rock, paper, scissors. It's a best of three, so it's going to be on the count of three, so one, <laughs> two, go. After the round of three is done, the person who loses is out and becomes the winner's cheerleader. <laughs> so the person, who, the person who wins is going to take the next closest person in the room and I want to hear you cheering for the person who beat you because we're not going to be sore losers in here and then it's going to continue until we're down to two people. The final two people are going to come up to the head of the room and we're going to finish the competition. Okay? Alright, let's find the closest person to you. Anyone in the room? <laughs> yes. Alright, so on a, on a count of three, best of three, we're going to go. Start going, start going, yeah, start going. We can start going. Can you play with her? Do you mind? Well, I might do it again. Yeah. Okay, when your game is finished, find someone nearby. <laughs> Okay, find the winner. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna be a cheerleader. Yeah? 
Yeah, best of three. Yeah. <laughs> Are we do doing it like a shootout, is it? Yeah, they were just doing something left. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, who's who's the winner? You're the winner. No. And who who won in your group? Uh, I won one. <laughs> what you won one. Yeah, I'm already good. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry. I that. <laughs> How are we doing? Yeah. Who's who's looking for a game? Who's who's won? Yeah? You won? Who's <laughs> <laughs> one? All right, we have a winner here. Who's looking for a winner? Okay, who else is looking for a winner? Who's who's won? Have you have you won? Are you playing now? If it's best of three, we've still got another team. Okay, keep it going. <laughs> who's, who's won? Uh, uh, neither of them. We both lost. We both, both lost. All right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Aha, we have... He's still playing. He's still playing. Okay, we have one guy here. These two together. Who else is still playing? Ross and anyone else? All right, game between you two, and then Ross is going to be the other finalist. All right, best of, best of three. Best of three. One, two, three, go. Alright. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. Fire. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. I'm going to rock it, right? Let's just do it. One, two, three, go. Yes. Okay. okay. Were, you the, were you the finalist in this, uh, this side? Alright. Come to the front, you and Russ. Round of three. When, when are we on doing go. on the three? On go, three go, go on three. One, two, three, go. Okay. okay. One, two, three, go. One, <laughs> one, two, three, go. Five. Oh. Yes. <laughs> well done. All right. Thank you, everyone, for, for participating. I have a couple of other short things to cover. Would you like to get a chair or sit on the ground or find somewhere you're comfortable and we're going to wrap up? <laughs> yes, this is what I want to hear. Great. All right. Well, for about 20 seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're just going to cover a couple of other things because I think they're fun and I think they're useful. This is, this is something else I want you to take away. Actually, never leave the playground, and this is why. Sorry, this takes a minute to... Call the anticipation. <laughs> okay. I often see in exercise circles and in gyms in the fitness world that they would usually take up an activity and they'll drill it to death and they'll do it for the next 20 or 30 years. And I actually don't think there's a lot of benefit there. I think there's more benefit in being a beginner. Um, this is also known as shoshin, which is a Japanese term. The idea is you just always go back to being the, the beginner in the room. Make sure that you're the one who has the, the most to learn and you're not the expert, whatever you do. And I think for physical um, tasks and capacities, this is actually really, really key and really, really important. So this is a good way of judging whether what you're doing is going to be beneficial. You might think you're taking a lot of exercise and you're in good shape if you do a lot of running and cycling, but chances are there's something that you're missing. Variety is always the key. So zone one is essentially, who here can juggle three balls? I know, I know Carl can, he could probably juggle more than that, in fact. We're going to take Carl, for instance. Carl can already juggle three balls. So if he's going to stand here at the front and throw them, he basically doesn't really have much benefit. He's not in zone one, because this is something he can do. If we take Catherine, for instance, who can't juggle three balls, she's going to be firmly in zone one, because they're going to be flying all over the place, and they're going to be hitting the ground. And eventually, she's going to move out of zone one and get to zone two, which basically means she can catch it three or four times in a row. And there's still some potential for a neural facilitation and learning, but it's not as good as it was in zone one. So to make it back to zone one, we then have to introduce, say, the fourth ball or a different, a different task to get her back there. Carl, on the other hand, with three balls, he's always going to be in zone three because he's perfected it. He can do it blindfolded. He can do it in the middle of conversation, all this kind of stuff. So the idea is always head back to zone one if you can. Um, this is where all the best, the best learning and the best kind of potential is. And because I know people like a little bit of science to back things up. So very quickly, the bit in bold, training induces changes in white matter architecture. This is the name of the paper. 
Um, and I'll just read these bits out. Ch structural changes did not correlate significantly with training progress or the performance level reached. The majority of the changes might be more closely related to the amount of time spent training than to training outcome. And this is a really key thing. There's this, in this study, they basically took, I think it was probably about 200 people, and they split them in half, and they had 50% who were able to learn to juggle within the course of time that this was run. The other 50% didn't get anywhere near there, but the brain scans basically showed the same activation and the same potential for development, regardless of whether they made it or not. So this also says, being the beginner is really good, because it doesn't actually matter if you ever get, en ever get ed any good at anything. Really, if you want to have a go at doing something, all the benefit is there in just trying and just putting the effort in. Um, something like learning a handstand, you know, if you, if you can't do it, you've never had a go. Have a go because all the benefit is in the attempts and it's in the trying. It's not about getting there because you'll find when you see someone who's a professional hand balancer, you know, they're there upside down thinking about their, their laundry and their washing and all the, all the other kinds of things. There's, no, there's really no benefit left for them, the same that we are when we're doing our day job. So all the benefit, I can't emphasize enough, is always at the beginning of all of these things. Um, right, and to conclude, I have a website where you can find me. That's not really the interesting bit. I do have a newsletter, which basically I send out once every now and then. This is really irregular, and I, I try to keep people up to date with interesting ideas and developments and things like I have on this matter. If you're interested in any way, this is the place to find it, down the bottom. Um, but most importantly, anyone who is even remotely interested, please find me. I'm fairly active on different social media channels. I am on Twitter now, uh, now because I'm kind of involved with this circle. Um, also, please mention Sync Norwich if you're interested in working with me in any capacity, because I can always make deals for people who have been along to here and, and have some good offers. Um, but that basically sums up what I want to share with you. I hope it's been valuable, and I hope that you have a couple of good takeaways from it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so now I guess it's my turn to be grilled with questions, <laughs> if anyone has any now. If everyone wants to take off and get home, I understand this is probably quite a lot for the end of the evening. Mm -hmm. It's quite in-depth and intense. Can I have a question? Oh, one question. Yes. <laughs> Roy. Um, love the uh, presentation. Thank um, you. So the core of your business, is it you go in and do workshops in, within companies? Is that, is that yeah, it's, it's been evolving and changing, so I haven't really had a, a particular direction until some of the opportunities have arrived. But I've basically just been working in the role of a physical therapist and a trainer which has been doing individual one-to-one -one stuff. Um, I found a lot of the material that I've been using with people has just had very, very good results. And it's, it's had good results with people in particularly fast times. It's not necessarily anything I've made up. I don't think there's anything particularly new under the sun. It's just I've taken bits and pieces from people I've learned from, and it seems to be working very well. So I'm, I'm basically trying to expand. I'm, I want to leave behind the one-to-one -one world. And I want to work in um, basically run stuff like this, but th that is far more in-depth and really provide people with the full toolbox rather than a couple of ideas and concepts. I want to give them the whole lot so they can say, yeah, I can look after stuff and then you know, I can always work as a, an, av an advisory role with people if they need any help with things along the way. That's the idea. Yeah. Thanks. So in terms of people working at a workstation all day, yep. do you advocate sitting is fine, just make sure you move every now and again, or do you is sitting and standing good? Or What's the, what's the ideal? The, I the, idea, the ideal, that's always that's a million dollar question. It's difficult. Typically, I like to say that it's good to take the focus away from sitting being the issue. But if you're going to go from sitting to standing, that's definitely a benefit. That's definitely a step in the right direction. Whatever, like, there's, there's really no question because of what it does allow you to do. The absolute best thing you can do is move a small amount regularly throughout the day, as opposed to feeling that you've been sat at a desk or you've been standing or whatever it is for eight hours a day, I have to go out and run a marathon in the evening. Um, there's a lot of, there have been a lot of people who have been suggesting that that could be really detrimental. And there seems to be a lot of research coming out now that basically suggests that the, the difference between the sedentary working and then the really, really full on active lifestyle is actually causing more problems than it's solving. Um, it's like that continuum I was talking about, where there's actually no moderation and just, just being happy that just moving on a regular basis is the best thing. And then if you want to go and do a Tough Mudder and run a marathon, then you can do. So the more you can move, and in the more ways, the better, basically. Awesome. Is that it? Thank Great. Thanks. <laughs>